And this morning, before we will start my preaching, I invite you to join me in, in prayer. Father Lord, we thank you for this wonderful afternoon. We thank you, Lord, that you are the source of knowledge and wisdom. Everything comes from you. Lord God, we invite your holy presence to be with us once again. Holy Spirit, enlighten us by your word. Holy Spirit, we pray, Lord, that you will humble everyone. Humble ourselves, O God. Quicken our hearts and minds, Lord, to receive your word. We believe that your word is powerful, sharper than the double-edged sword. Have your way, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I would like to ask everyone to feel uh, comfortable, find your seats, and above all, prepare your heart and mind to receive the message of God this morning. My preaching topic this afternoon is about what is saving faith. What is saving faith? Maybe you will tell me, Brother Ray, uh, this is quite a familiar uh, topic, but the Lord impressed in my heart that we need to learn more, understand more about this uh, topic. I remember when I was in the Philippines, I, I traveled by coach for about 16 hours from my province in in summer to to Manila. So I traveled by night and I slept soundly. No, while I'm on the coast. Then I just realized that when I woke up, I just realized that I'm already in Manila. But I don't know how how's my trip. It maybe the, the roads are bumpy. I did not enjoy the, the sceneries along the way, the places along the way, but I only found out that I safely arrived in Manila. Church, this is a uh, an illustration. Many people today were saved, but they don't know how they were saved. They don't have the complete knowledge about salvation. So this morning, we will look the biblical uh, passages that supports the topic, what is saving faith? Now, what is faith? start with the world definition of faith. The world defined faith to see is to believe. <laughs> How do you define faith? To see is to believe. People nowadays eat in the restaurant without knowing or seeing the chef. But they believe that there is someone out there in the kitchen cooking for their food. Do you agree with me? Also, many people today are driving a car. I myself is driving. So yesterday I was in, in Sussex to prepare the church hall and pray for the opening of our church. I myself is driving. I don't know. I don't see the car maker but i do believe that there is someone or a group of people who manufactured the car that i am driving they believe there is a car maker even they don't see by themselves people ride an airplane they don't see or know the pilot yet they believe and trusted the pilot. Amen? Do you agree with me? Initially, people does not believe there is coronavirus. Some said, oh, uh, coronavirus is a hoax. Coronavirus is 
is not true. It it is just to intimidate. It's just to inflict fear to people. Coronavirus is harmless. Maybe because they cannot see the coronavirus. That's why they don't believe. But now governments and presidents knew that coronavirus even though you cannot see the virus, but it is real. Now, sadly, thousands of people died here in UK and even in other parts of the country. Economies paralyzed because of this virus. One thing I know and one thing people learn that the virus is real, even if you don't see the virus. Sadly, it is easier for people to believe the virus, the chef, the car maker, than, than the car maker that they don't see rather than believing in God. Amen? They believe on the virus that they don't see, but they don't believe on God. No? Because they said, oh, I don't believe on God because I can't see God. I remember one, one, one man said, Brother Ray, I don't believe in God because I don't see God. <laughs> what, what he said? I don't believe in God because... I don't see God. Also, he told me, if I will see God, then I will believe. Have you heard also some people are saying, if I see your God, I will believe. If I will not see your God, then I will not believe. This guy is like Thomas, who needs physical proof before believing. You know the story of Thomas. He always asked for a proof before he believes. You know, you know what? I don't buy that argument. Why? Jesus came, healed the sick. Jesus came, performed miracles. No? Yet, what people did? Did they believe? <laughs> no. What they did is they crucified Jesus. Jesus performed miracle. They can see Jesus face to face. Jesus resurrected from the grave to prove that he is God. Yet, did people believe Jesus? Sadly, most people did not believe. Even after the resurrection of Jesus, the religious leaders want a cover-up, no? To, to hide the resurrection of Jesus. Instead of believing Jesus, they continued of their unbelief. In fact, the religious leaders gave bribe to the Roman soldiers and told them, please, don't tell anybody that Jesus resurrected from the grave. I'll give you money. Shut your mouth. Just be silent. We don't want you to tell others that Jesus resurrected from the grave. In your slide, if you read in, in Matthew 28, 12 to 13, when they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave large sum of money. Take note of the word large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, Tell them his disciples came at night and stole him away while we sleep. Look, these religious leaders, instead of believing Jesus, because Jesus resurrected, they want to cover to hide the story of Jesus' resurrection. But you know what? The religious leaders cannot hide 
the truth that Jesus resurrected. Jesus' resurrection was witnessed by not only by the soldiers, but witnessed by the disciples, by Mary, Martha, and the three Marys, and many other people, proved in the Bible that Jesus resurrected from the grave. People, the religious leaders, cannot hide the truth that Jesus indeed resurrected from the grave. My point is, even if people will see Jesus face to face, there is no 100% guarantee that they will believe. <laughs> what? There is no 100% guarantee that they will believe Jesus. Do you agree with me? This is just one example. God is a spirit. As a spirit, we cannot see God. As a spirit, we cannot know God. But God revealed himself through the incarnation of Jesus Christ. In the last two Sundays, I preached about the incarnation of Jesus Christ. God became man. So God himself revealed to us through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the God personified. I repeat, Jesus is what? The God personified. Jesus was here on earth for 33 long years. Yet only few people believe in him. Only few people believe in him. This is, this is so-called seeing but not believing. Yeah? Seeing but not believing. Yes, they see Jesus. Jesus performed miracles. They see Jesus face to face. Yet, they don't believe. People will say once again, Oh, Brother Ray, that is an old, old story. It happened 2,000 years ago. Well, I will ask you once again, my friend, if Jesus come now in glory, will you believe in him? This is my personal question for you and me. If Jesus will come now in glory, will you believe in him? Again, there is no guarantee that you will believe. There is no guarantee that people will believe in Jesus, even if they will see him face to face. Oh, maybe you will say, oh, Brother Ray, maybe that is your opinion. No, I'm not giving my opinion. I will tell you that what I am telling you is what the Bible said. If you read in Revelation chapter 20, it talks about the millennial kingdom of Christ or simply the word millennium. Do you know what is a millennium? Millennium is, Satan is bound for 1,000 years. If you read the last chapters of Revelation 20, 21, 22, starting in chapter 20, Satan will be bound, put in prison for 1,000 years. While Satan is in prison, Jesus will come, visibly, physically. No, as man, as incarnate man, and stay here on earth for 1,000 years. That is the millennium. I'm not preaching about eschatology or future things, maybe in my next preaching, but I'm just giving you a little background about the millennial kingdom. Church, if you miss to see Jesus in his first coming, don't worry. Jesus will come back and will be with you and me if you are a believer and we will be with him for 1,000 years. Remember that Adam and Eve survived, lived for about 900. The oldest man in the Bible is Methuselah. Aged 969. 
And some people complain, God is unfair. Why, why, why Methuselah, Adam lived 900 years, 969? Why most people today live only about 80 to 90 years old? To 90 years, maybe 100 is just a bonus. It's just maximum. Friend, don't complain. If you miss that 900 years of age during Adam's time, you will not miss this 1,000 years. Wow, 1,000 years is long enough. It's a blessing. It's not yet heaven. Heaven is eternal. You will be with Jesus in eternity. But this millennial kingdom, 1,000 years on earth here with Jesus, is a taste of heaven. It's a taste of eternity. This is a... This is uh, an installment, if if you like. First, give. Pray taste of heaven, pray taste of eternity. 1,000 years here on earth. And you know what will happen at the end of the millennium? Satan again will be released from prison. Then, when Jesus is, uh, when Satan is loose here on earth, He will gather every nation, maybe Great Britain, Russia, China. He will gather all the nations, all the people here on earth, and he will uh, form an army. Then they will invade the believers. They will invade the city of God. This is, the Bible calls this the battle of Uh, Armageddon or Gog and, and Mago in Revelation 20. So Satan will gather all the nations and they will fight against the believers. They will invade the city of God. Some interpreters uh, said that this city of God is Jerusalem. It means that when Jesus will come, his capital uh, city No, is Jerusalem. He will reign in Jerusalem together with the unbelievers for 1,000 years. Yet, when Satan is loose, he will gather people and fight and invade Jerusalem or the city of God. But you know what? There is no war will happen because God will send fire, fire and consume. Satan and all nations, nationalities who rebelled against God. My point here is, if Jesus will come, these people will not believe and will continue to rebel against God. That's what I said earlier. There is no guarantee that when Jesus will come, people will believe in him. Church, People will obey Satan rather than God. Even in the future, during the millennial reign of Christ, people will choose Satan over Christ. It is very sad. Now, don't tell me that if you see Jesus, if you see God, you will believe. Church, unbelief, is incurable. Yeah? Even in hell, if you read the book of Revelation, people will not repent. They will continue to curse God. So, unbelief, rebelliousness of people will continue even in hell. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now you will ask me, Brother Ray, what is the greatest sin in the Bible? Do you know what is the greatest sin in the Bible? Some said it's murder. Some said it's adultery. Some said it's idolatry. That is the greatest sin because uh, they are replacing God, they are worshiping God other than the real God. Fred, the greatest sin is not idolatry, 
not murder, not idolatry. The greatest sin is the sin of unbelief. Amen? Do you agree with me? If you agree with me, you can type Amen in your in your laptop or, or in your cell phone. Hallelujah. Praise God. The greatest sin is unbelief. The rejection of Jesus, Lord, our Savior. The problem of sin, sin is not a problem, my friend. Why? The problem of sin is uh, already done by Christ in the cross. Christ died, died already in the cross to save us from all our sin. Jesus offered himself to solve the sin problem. So no problem about sin. The problem now is unbelief. <laughs> what is the problem now? Unbelief. People do not believe God. Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sin. No person end up in hell because of sin. I will repeat. This is a very important uh, truth from the Bible. No person end up in hell because of sin. No. People end up in hell because of unbelief. For not believing Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Okay, read in John 3, 1a. He who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe, take note of the word who does not believe meaning unbelieving unbelief is the cause that people end up in hell who does not believe is condemned already they are already prepared for eternal uh, condemnation they are already prepared for eternal fire reserved for uh, unbelievers and the false prophets and even for demons and satan why? Why they are condemned? He has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son, Jesus. Church, this is the reason why hell is overcrowding. It's not because of what they are doing. It's not because of murder, idolatry. It's not because of uh, other heinous crimes or sins. The reason is their rejection of the Savior. That is unbelief. Let's give a clap of ring for the Lord, for His goodness, for His grace. Hallelujah. <laughs> Church, unbelief is incurable. Some said that Cancer is incurable, but not at all. Yeah, most cancers right now can can be cured by by, by medicines, but unbelief is incurable. Incurable. That's why the punishment of unbelief is eternal. Without God's grace, in your slide, without God's grace and quickening of the Holy Spirit. People cannot believe. I would like to emphasize this one. Without God's grace and quickening of the Holy Spirit, people cannot believe. People's heart are hardened. People's heart rejects the truth. People's heart are selfish and sinful. We cannot believe God unless our heart is quickened by the Holy Spirit. Apostle Paul cannot believe Jesus. Apostle Paul cannot believe God. He persecutes the Christians. He murdered the Christians. But by the quickening of God, Apostle Paul believed and in fact served our Lord Jesus Christ. The whole life. All of his life he served 
the Lord Jesus. And he was used mightily by God. This is just an example. Even if Jesus will show himself visibly, physically, there is always rejection. There is always unbelief. What is saving faith? Let's move to Hebrews 11.1. 1. Shall we read? Now faith is us is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. This is the definition of faith. Now, in other translation, in amplified version, it says, Now faith is being sure of what we hope for, uncertain of what we do not see. <laughs> Uncertain of what we do not see. In your slide. So faith means believing without seeing. As simple as this. What is faith? Faith is believing without seeing. You did not see, but you Believe. One time, Thomas was rebuked by Jesus because he don't believe that Jesus is alive unless he will see and touch Jesus' wound. He was rebuked by Jesus and Jesus said, Thomas, you are unbelieving. Blessed are those who did not see but believe. Church, Faith doesn't need proof. Faith needs believing even without seeing. Shall we read uh, a quotation from Hannah Whittle Smith? Sight is not faith. Hearing is not faith. Neither is feeling is faith. But believing when we neither see, hear, nor feel is faith. In other words, you did not see, you did not hear, you did not feel. Faith is not about emotion, but believing in the absence of physical proof. That is faith. In other words, Word, faith is believing the unseen through the word of God. Church, our faith is not just a product of our own imagination or information. The source of our faith is the word of God. It's the, the Bible. This is the source of our faith. I haven't said uh, I haven't heard a man who said, Pastor, I was saved by reading the, the newspaper. <laughs> I haven't heard a man who said, Pastor, I, I, I was saved by reading the dictionary. I became born again by reading the horoscope. Do you like the, the horoscope? <laughs> I hope if you're a Christian, uh, you're not reading anymore about horoscope, but the Bible. Amen? Uh, not horror. Yeah, you will only be frightened in reading of this uh, information. The source of truth is the, the Bible. Salvation comes from hearing and believing the word of God. I repeat, salvation comes by hearing and Believing the word of God. You can read that in Romans uh, 10, 17. Now, I would like to ask you this question. Do you believe that faith can save? Say amen if you believe on this. If you are not sure, don't 
than 5 mn. If you believe that faith can save, how many Savior now you believe? <laughs> so you believe faith can save, and you believe as well that uh, Jesus can save. Church, faith cannot save, but the object of faith, which is Jesus Christ. In your screen, faith cannot save, but the object of faith. And who is the object of our faith? Faith in Jesus Christ. There is no other name that can save you and me apart from the name of Jesus. There is only one God. There is only one Savior. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Apart from Him, there is no salvation. If you read in Philippians 3.9, And be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but which is through faith in Jesus. Take note this word, through faith in Jesus. This is where we are saved. How we are saved. Our faith in the person of Jesus Christ. If you suffered diarrhea, example, <laughs> of course you need a tablet or medicines. And so you will get the tablet, you will get also the water. So you put the tablet in your, in your tongue, drink the water. Now the water will channel no? the tablet going to your stomach. After drinking the water and taking the tablet, you, you became well. Now the question is, are you healed by the tablet or by the water? <laughs> of course, you were healed by the tablet. The tablet, you use the water to drink the tablet. This is just an illustration about faith. You are not saved by faith or faith cannot save. save. But you are saved by the object of faith, which is Jesus Christ. Amen? Faith is not a savior. Faith is just a channel to the savior. Do you get the, the logic there? Faith is not a savior. Faith cannot save. But faith is just what? A channel to the Savior. Some writers said it is a vessel. It is a wing that will bring you to Jesus. That is faith. Saving faith. Next slide, you, uh, shall we read in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Again, the Bible is clear that faith is a channel through faith. And how about brother Ray, grace? Well, we will we will we will mention that. There's a quotation from uh, Charles Spurgeon. This is a good explanation of grace and faith. In your slide, faith occupies the position of a channel or conduit pipe. Grace is the fountain or the stream. In other words, grace is the source. Faith is the aqueduct along which the flood of mercy flows down to refresh the thirsty sons of men. Do you get the message? Grace is a channel. Grace is the, the source. Even 
if you believe in Jesus without God's grace, without God's favor, your faith, your believing is useless. That's why the grace of God no, offered to all men through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Brother, how about the faith in God the Father or faith in the Holy Spirit? Do you think that believing on God the Father or believing God the Holy Spirit will save a man? Church, in the Bible, Trinity is at work in the business of salvation. But Jesus was appointed by the Trinity as the only way, as the only channel of salvation. If you read in John 14, 6, Jesus is the only way. And if you read in 1 Timothy 2, 5, Jesus is the Savior mediator between Christ and and God, between man and God. That is Jesus. So if you want to be saved, don't go to the God the Father, go, don't go to the God the Holy Spirit, but go to Christ. Believe and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Don't trust on your religion, because religion cannot save. As I always mention, I prefer if I don't have religion, but I have Christ. Rather than I have one or two religions and I don't have Christ. Religion is useless without Christ. Faith in Jesus is the only way to be saved. I know there are some religion who is teaching that if you are a member of this church, if you are a member of this group, you will be saved. That is a false teaching. The Bible did not mention any group or religion in order to be saved. The Bible it's very clear that there is no salvation apart in believing and accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Brother, sister, family, and friends, if you want to be saved, don't go to religion. Go to Jesus. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Once you believe and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you become born again. Your life will be changed. Your life will never be the same again. Once you receive Jesus, you will receive also the Holy Spirit. That is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. Yes, Christ now is in your heart. And then Jesus also promised that when I dwell in you, the Holy Spirit as well will dwell in you. So you have now Jesus in your heart. You have now the Holy Spirit. Now when the Holy Spirit is in your heart, the Holy Spirit will guide you what church, what religion you will attend. Amen? So don't seek religion, but seek Christ. And Christ, when you found Christ, Christ will tell you, will guide you what church you are attending. You are going to attend. Hallelujah. Praise God. Shall we give a clap of praying for the Lord Jesus? I hope this topic of faith is sound and clear in your heart and in your mind. Hallelujah. Praise God. Church, before I, I end my Preaching, believing, and trusting is inseparable to faith. Believing and trusting is inseparable to faith. If you believe, you will trust. Amen? Believing and trusting cannot be separated. Just like in water, hydrogen and oxygen cannot be separated. 
Believing without trusting is not faith. You can believe without trusting, but you cannot trust without believing. You cannot trust a person you don't believe. You, you doubt about that person, you cannot trust. Those who truly believe will trust. An action will will follow. If you read in James 2.17, faith and work is inseparable. Faith without work is what? Dead. Faith without work is dead. Work does not save, but a genuine saving faith will do good works. Amen? Good works cannot save, but good work can validate, can affirm that your faith is genuine. I'm not saying that I am against good, good works. No. We must put good works in a proper place. Good works cannot save, but a saved man will do good works. So good works is not a channel of salvation. It's not a means of salvation. But good works are the product. Amen? Good works are product, manifestation, fruit of your genuine saving faith in Jesus. Church, if you want a person to change, don't tell him to do good works. Why? Because, because he cannot change. Man want to do good, but man has no power to do good. I remember one, uh, one wife complained to me when I was in mission pastor, I want you to help me to change my husband. No, I'm so burdened. Uh, our relationship is broken. Our trust is broken. We're planning to have separation. And I told this sister, Sister, if you cannot change your husband, do you think I can change your husband? I told her, don't change your husband. Because even your husband cannot change himself. What I advise you with the wisdom of the Lord, bring your husband to Christ. Pray and pray for the salvation of your husband. The moment your husband will believe in Jesus, chains will follow. Amen? We cannot change ourselves apart from Christ. We cannot change ourselves apart from genuine encounter with God. Once we believe Jesus, our Lord and Savior, once we are saved, good work will just naturally flow. Amen? Good work will just naturally flow. And that's the time that we become a blessing to our husband, our wife, our families, and loved ones. We become a blessing to the church. And above all, we become a blessing in the sight of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Faith is important before salvation and after salvation. Amen? Faith is what? Important before salvation and after salvation. Before salvation, it saves. That is saving faith in Jesus Christ. After salvation, you need faith for Christian living, ministry, and service. We need Faith. In our daily walk of life, we need faith. And we know that faith can move mountains. If you are in crisis in life, if you need healing, if you need finances, just ask and pray and believe. For nothing is impossible to God. Don't doubt. Believe. 
Are you in troubles? Are you in trials? Are you in crisis at the moment? In times of this pandemic, are you in crisis? Have faith. Believe and trust the Lord. The same faith that saved you is the same faith that will deliver you, that will bless you, that will protect you, that will heal you. Hallelujah. Church, strengthen your faith. After salvation, the process of our Christian living will continue. After salvation, we need to grow in faith. After salvation, we need to mature in faith. That's why in Philippians 2, 12 and 13, now this is my last verse this afternoon, work out your own salvation. Yeah, meaning exercise your salvation. It doesn't mean that work for your own salvation. No, because work cannot save. As what I said earlier, the Bible said that work cannot save. Work out means exercise your faith to grow. Just like when you go to the gym, you do a workout, you are not making muscles, <laughs> but you are building and developing muscles. So we as a Christian, after we believe Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we need to develop our faith, our trust in Him. Brothers and sisters, how's your faith in Jesus? Are you trusting God about your daily needs? Are you trusting God about your, your job? About your business? Are you trusting God about the salvation of your family and loved ones? You need faith. Trust and believe. Trust and believe. Whatever you ask in God's name, as long as you believe, God will hear it. God will hear it. The same faith that saves you is the same faith that will sustain, sustain and empower you as a believer. Hallelujah. Praise God. Church, from first to last, we need faith. Amen? From first to last. From salvation until we became born again, we need to have faith in Jesus. Deepen your faith in Jesus. Deepen your trust in Jesus. Continue to believe in Jesus. What God started in your life, He will complete it. Amen? Whatever circumstance, trial, situation you are in right now, the good thing God started in your life, that is salvation, God will complete it. God will complete it. Just continue to believe. Just continue to trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Shall we pray? And if you have some prayer request, you can type it, drop it in the inbox. If it is confidential, if it is just a general prayer, just type it and we will pray for your prayer request. If you drop your prayer request later, be sure that we will take note of your prayer request and we will pray for you during our prayer meetings. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Church, we will, we will pray as we close the service. We will pray for the nations. We will pray for healing for those who are sick. We pray for salvation to those who are unsaved. And we pray for, above all, healing about this pandemic, about this uh, health crisis, world crisis. We pray for God's intervention. And I do believe that nothing is impossible with God as long as we have faith. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We have a couple of prayer requests here, and you can continue typing. 
Yeah, let's pray for uh, Jesa Idilo, wherever you are right now. Uh, we are praying for your healing. Nothing is impossible to God. And also we are going to pray, uh, Brother Arturo and family, wherever you are right now, uh, God's hand is not short to heal you. God not, God's hand is not short to heal you, to touch you, wherever you are right now. Hallelujah. Just to strengthen your faith, uh, Jesa and Arturo, we will lift your condition to God. And I do believe that you will receive breakthrough. You will receive breakthrough. And we as a church, we are going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. We will start to pray to uh, Jesa, then uh, Brother Arturo. Hallelujah. Church, let's join hand together in prayer. For nothing is impossible with God. Lord God, hallelujah, we praise you, we honor you, we glorify your name, we magnify your name. Lord, you are the author of faith. Lord, you are Lord, the fountain of life. You are even, Lord, the author of life. Lord, all comes from you. Father, Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who gave us hope and a good future. We thank you, Lord, for, for, for Jesus, Lord, for saving us. Thank you, Lord, not only salvation, Lord, but, Lord God, you promised healing, salvation, and deliverance. Right now, Lord, we entrust to you, Father Lord, uh, Brother Arturo, where he is right now, Lord, you know him, where he is, Lord, you know his condition, oh God. Lord, I pray that you will uh, visit him, you will touch him, wherever he is right now, Lord, I pray, Lord, for your divine touch, divine healing be upon Brother Arturo in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, from head to toe. Father, Lord, whatever inflictions would I mean, Lord, in, in his body, Lord, in Jesus' name, remove it. Lord God, in Jesus' name, we pray, Lord, that you will cure that sickness and disease. We pray, O oh God, by your grace, by your mercy, complete healing, complete physical wholeness be upon Brother Arturo. And above all, Lord, we pray for his salvation. Lord, I pray that you will manifest your presence in the heart of my brother. Thank you, Lord, that his life will never be the same again. Put joy, strength, peace, and comfort that comes from you amid of his condition, oh God. Thank you, Lord. We pray for uh, uh, Sister Jessa. Thank you, Lord, wherever she is right now, Lord, in a part, uh, whatever, Lord, he is dealing right now, oh God, wherever, wherever she is, Lord God, Lord God, there's no distance in prayer. I pray also, Lord, that you will touch and visit uh, Sister Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let your healing, you let your healing, Lord, uh, be upon my sister Jesus in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will touch her. Thank you, Lord. Whatever, Lord, uh, infliction of the enemy, whatever sickness, Lord, in her body, in Jesus' name, every part of her body not well, Lord God, Lord, by your power, by your grace, Lord, you will restore it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. The life of Sister Jesus will never be the same again. We pray, Lord, and claim for the restoration of her health. Restoration, Lord, of her physical body in Jesus' name. And above all, Lord, we pray for her salvation in Jesus' name that Brother Jesus will continue to know you and encounter you in a powerful and special way. Thank you, Lord God. Even, Lord, we pray also, God, for, for the world, Lord, amidst of this pandemic, amidst of this crisis, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that every nation from UK, Philippines, United States, and around the world, thank you, Lord. I pray, Lord, for divine intervention, healing, first and foremost, Lord, healing of the soul. I pray, Lord, that you will use this pandemic, Lord, that people, Lord, will humble themselves. That people, Lord, will will seek you. That people, Lord, will know you. That people, Lord, will receive you as their Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Humble your people. Humble, humble, Lord, the people of the world, O oh God. Humble us, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. I even pray, Lord, for healing. Those who are infected, Lord, with uh, COVID, O oh God, 19. Those, Lord, who have symptoms. Those who are in the ICU. 
those Lord who are under a ventilator, oh God, in Jesus' name, Lord, visit them. Visit them, Lord. Touch them. Father, Lord God, reveal yourself to them. I pray, Lord, for your divine intervention. I pray, Lord, for your divine healing be upon them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. There is healing in your name. There is salvation in your name. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. And all of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Family and friends, thank you for listening, joining with us, fellowshipping with us this afternoon. I hope and pray that you are blessed, encouraged, comforted by the Word of God. Once again, I'll invite you next week at 11 o'clock, UK time for our live Facebook Sunday service. Thank you, and I hope and pray that the blessing of God will cover you now and in the days to come. In Jesus' name, amen.